Congratulations, you've joined into the programs, you've got all figured out, you've done some studying, you did a $7 course and learned in two weeks how to do digital affiliate marketing, and then this one little bitty question jumped up. What niche do I pick? Oh my goodness, let me tell you what, that is one of the most difficult questions to answer for anyone, anyone, any guru, and here's why. They don't know your passion, okay? Now, the best niche for you to pick is something that is very, very specific to you. So in today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about the things you can do to help narrow down the best niche to help you get started in your new business. Let's get to it. So you've decided you want to get into digital affiliate marketing. Uh, great decision. Lots of money to be made in this industry. Uh, but you have to decide which niche you want to go into. Now, most people make the mistake of simply picking the niche of the person who got them involved in their, their training or their journey. Just because you had a problem uh, that digital affiliate marketing could solve doesn't mean that you're the expert in digital affiliate marketing and need to market that to other people. It's not how it works. What you need to market to other people is the thing that you are expert at. You are so passionate about that you would just talk about to everyone, okay? Uh, I like to say, you know, if you could sit in a room for three hours and only talk about one subject, what would it be? You know, uh, because that's really something that you're going to be passionate about. It's something that you're going to love to do. It's something you're going to be really involved in. You're going to know a lot about. You're going to be knowledgeable about. You're going to be able to speak to very confidently. Because when you pick your niche, that's exactly what you're going to want to need. Now, the challenge was picking that niche or figuring out what that is. And most gurus out there most of the, the people that are doing these training courses honestly don't answer that they, they're like oh, i don't know just just pick one you like you know and go well here's where really where you need to go with this and and uh and there's there's, there's technically some bad advice there because you really really have to be careful about the niche you select if you do and you and you take the time to really research the niche you want to pick and do it systematically then you can drastically increase your chances of success in business nothing is more frustrating than going into business being all excited about it trying to get going you start posting TikTok videos and facebook videos and instagram and linkedin and and pinterest and all these other videos and and then you're so excited and you're doing everything they're telling you and then it's just not producing results that's very frustrating. The real reason a lot of times that happens is because you're not the expert. People don't care what you have to say. You just got started. I'm not going to listen to the white belt on how to beat a black belt, right? I want to go to the expert. I want to go to that master instructor and learn from them. And that's the person I'm really going to pay attention to. We want great quality and the information that we're gaining. This is one of the major benefits that I learned when I did go to college. I don't recommend people go to college anymore unless it's absolutely necessary. But let me tell you why. You see, in college, you learn a lot of different things. You, uh, I have two master's degrees. I have a doctorate. I've been asked to teach at universities. Uh, and, and to be quite honest with you, I've, I've opted not to do that at this point because I feel like it's not necessarily working for my client or my perfect customer, which in this case, maybe you, okay? You are the person who wants to learn about picking the right niche. And that is something that I'm passionate about. And that is something I'm knowledgeable about. So uh, that's who I want to talk to. And instead of sticking to some academic curriculum that they force me to teach, I want to tell you the things that are actually going to work in your business, things that are going to actually help you be successful. So, uh, but what I did learn in academia is, is there is a very, very valuable addition to things that most people are annoyed by, but have no clue is the most critical thing in their education. It's called choosing the right resources. Most of academic study, you're, you're writing papers, you're writing either a thesis or a dissertation or, or a whatever, okay? Uh, a paper for a class. And in that you're required to have a certain number of resources or quotes or other things. And it's because we don't want your opinion. We want you to go research what's already been studied so that you'll have some understanding of it. But we can also now know where you got your information and then check the quality of that. Most people, we do the same thing when we pick information for ourselves. I want to know where'd you get that from? Where's your background? What's your understanding behind this? You know, you don't believe me? Let's look at social media, for example. And I'm going to avoid politics and religion and all that. But 
uh, uh, controversial issues. That's not what this is about. But let, let's talk about that. When we do find something on social media that is a controversial issue, a lot of times what we find ourselves doing is gravitating towards people who are speaking things that we already agree with. And that's because it helps reassure us that we haven't made a mistake in our own assumptions and learning. So who is the resource is something that we subconsciously look for. And, and then we kind of categorize them in that field so that we know, okay, here's their perspective. Now, uh, for me, I have a lot of different perspectives. My perspective is expertise. I am an empirical study type person, okay? Uh, my company is literally Imperio Digital Learning, okay? My focus is to teach and promote programs that are backed by empirical evidence. What does that mean? That means that I have found evidence to support what is being said, what is being taught, and what my students are learning. This way you know that it's not just my opinion, but it's backed up by evidence and I can prove it. When you get started into your first business, and maybe you've already tried, okay? You got started, you picked a niche. Here's a great example, Legendary Marketer. Wonderful program, I absolutely love it. Uh, they have a $7 training, it's two weeks long, uh, teaches you the fundamentals of affiliate marketing. It doesn't hand you a business that makes you a millionaire overnight. You have to work at it like any other business. But it is a fabulous training program because it goes into what people are actually doing in the industry. Here's the mistake I see most people make. They don't know which niche to pick, so they say, well, I'll just become an affiliate for this program and promote it because they have great commissions, right? So that makes sense. Everybody loves it. I love it, so everybody must love it, right? Maybe, but are you the person to tell them about it? That's the problem, okay? So uh, danger, Will Robinson, danger, okay? We don't wanna necessarily do that. We wanna make sure that it's something you can speak to and you're somebody I should listen to. I'll give you a great example. I have one friend who uh, who loves Legendary Marketer, did the training, and started throwing out videos right away. Right away, right away, right away. No results, okay? Just terrible results, didn't, didn't do anything with it, got very, very frustrated, and basically almost gave up on the entire business all in itself as, oh, it's just a scam, it doesn't work because I didn't make success at it. Now let me tell you about my friend Sarah. See, Sarah is actually somebody I met online, uh, through a TikTok video of hers I saw. And uh, uh, in her her journey, she was working as a physical therapist. Her husband was a construction worker. Uh, they're from Western Kentucky. She's got this sweet little twang in her voice that's, uh, you know, got that Southern thing. She's just a good Christian woman. And uh, uh, she's trying to take care of her family and, and just wanted to make an extra 500 bucks a month, you know, as a side hustle. She got into Legendary Marketer. She did the training. She did the $7 and, and did two weeks training. And then even went in further and invested into herself and into her business with uh, Business Blueprints. I actually did that myself. Uh, highly recommended if you're looking for different business models that you want to go into, but it's not for everybody and it's not required. It's just something that if you wanted to do, you could. Uh, I did it. I recommend it. But um, anyway, so Sarah also did that, but she started diving into the niche of business and finance and, and helping and what she promotes is the legendary marketer program now and uh what she found was that in a matter of months she was actually making 10 15 20 30 thousand dollars a month and and sometimes even more than that and has made over a couple hundred thousand dollars in her business in just the last five or six months you know so what's the difference why why did she do so well with it and he struggled hmm he was doing it because he wanted to make some money. He wanted to do it on the side. Didn't give a flip about finance. Didn't give a flip about the program. He just wanted to make money. And, and hey, I understand. I get it. Dollars and cents, you know. I mean, what's that old something? Cash rules everything around me. Green, get the money. You know, I totally understand. Right? But at the same time, when Sarah would talk to people about the program, she really loved it. And she loved what she was doing. And more importantly, she was speaking to her perfect customer. And she isolated that very, very well. And her perfect customer was a mom, okay? A single mom or, or even a, a married mom who was just struggling, trying to make ends meet and wanted to help her husband, wanted to help her hero and, and be his greatest fan by supporting him and bringing in some extra money. Uh, she wanted to do it with her side hustle. Now it turns out she's killing it, killing it. I think he's gonna retire. He got him an official sugar mama now, I don't know. Here's, here's what I found was, it's about the passion. It's about finding that the people that are perfect for you to talk to. 
that they need your help. They need what you can offer. And what she could offer was a solution to a problem that she was very, very familiar with because she felt the problem. That's the secret to finding your niche. You have to be able to dive into something in, in a field, whatever it is, that, uh, that you are passionate about, that you felt the pain of your customers in, and, uh, and your clients and the people that you're gonna talk to. And honestly, what, what I felt the most pain in was when I went into this business, I felt pretty confident. I mean, I have a doctorate in business. I, I had owned multiple businesses. I'd made a million dollars by the time I was 26. I mean, I knew what I was doing, but I still struggled. And the reason I struggled is because I wasn't talking to my perfect customer. Well, and uh, there, there were some other things that I needed to kind of learn and develop in. And that is where it got exciting for me. You see, as a new business owner, as a new uh, digital affiliate marketer, I have felt the pain that you have felt, okay? Have you tried to go in and get going and get launched and you jumped into a niche, maybe even started promoting that legendary marketer program and just didn't see the results? Yeah, I felt that, okay? So I had to adjust, I had to shift, and I had to find where was I the most passionate so that I could find the people that I could help the most. And in going into and selecting a niche, that's that's not something that, that most people understand because picking a niche is often done based on market research rather than internal research. And that is where I think I can help you the most. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you think you have a niche that you wanna go into, whatever it is, let's use sailing as an example. I love to sail. I'm passionate about sailing. I can talk about sailing all day long because it's just what I love to do. Uh, great news, my wife loves it too, so that makes our lives a lot easier in our time off. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so let's say you want to talk about sailing, you want to go into the sailing niche, you want to market sailing products and goods and services, fine. All right, but who is your perfect customer? Is it the person who's been sailing for... Uh, 50 years who knows everything there is to know? Or is it the person who's just getting into sailing? Or is it the person who wants to do sailing but uh, doesn't even know it yet? And what I mean by that is maybe they just want adventure. They want the things that sailing provides, but they don't realize that sailing is a solution to provide the things that they're really craving in their life. So once you can narrow down kind of who that is, and, and you think that through and you really process who might be your perfect customer, then you want to dive in and start researching how to find their greatest pain point. Here's how you can do that. When you start researching pain points, you want to go find your perfect customer. Where are they hanging out? Where are they at? You know, well, in sailing, they may be at a marina. You know, they may be in sailing sites on social media. They may be uh, uh, certain channels on TikTok. They may be in various places. You find that. You research it. Google, Reddit. Uh, chat GPT, all these things can help you narrow down where those customers are and get into their communities now. Once you get into their communities, you can start to study and research and learn about the individuals in those markets and what their greatest pain point is. Great example. In sailing, uh, one of the pain points that I discovered was actually just learning all the points of the boat. Okay, That was such a barrier for entry for most people, all right? Most people, they, well, I, I'd love to do sailing. It sounds fun and adventure's great, but man, I don't know what that cable is and what that line is and is a line of rope and is a starboard a port and is, is that, do I stick it in the aft? I don't know what to do, okay? And when that, that little thing, to me, was little, but to them was huge, was the barrier to entry into that solution to what they were looking for, more adventure. Okay, so that's how you dig into those pain points and you try to explore what's hurting your client and how you might be able to solve it. I use sailing as an example, but what if you have no interest in sailing? <laughs> okay, so what are you great at? What are you passionate about? Let's talk about that. See, when you, uh, if you could sit in a bar or a restaurant or a hotel or an airport, whatever, wherever it is, and you have to sit there for four hours with a total stranger, and you can only talk about one topic. What topic do you hope to talk about? What topic would you talk about for four hours with a total stranger and absolutely love the entire time you were there? Okay, for me, maybe martial arts, maybe sailing, maybe model airplanes. For you, it could be pets. It could be 
uh, hair care. It could be, you know, uh, massage therapy. I don't know. I mean, it could be whatever, but whatever that one thing is for you, that's the area you want to consider looking at as a niche first. Now, how can you make money in that? That's another animal. There are affiliate programs everywhere. All kinds of niches have. If you want to market Oreo cookies to people, okay, Oreo cookie will actually give you a commission. You don't believe me? Go Google it. Google Oreo cookie affiliate program, all right? They will pay you to share Oreo cookies and get other people to buy them and then give you money back. Vessi shoes, one of my favorite. They're great sailing shoe. It's it's waterproof and all that stuff. I, I, I recommend that to people. And when they buy it, I get paid. Love it. So whatever your niche is, whatever your products are, they're out there, okay? There are products available in that niche. I I'm guarantee, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, that there are some products out there or services that people are offering affiliate programs for. So there, there's options. But once you find that passion, and now you know what the thing you want to talk about all the time is, start learning about the people in that niche, in that industry, and explore their pain points and then how you might be able to solve those pain points for them. Now you've got a product, you've got a you've got a niche, you've got things like that, but is it the perfect niche for you? That's really the depth of what this needs to be talked what needs to be talked about here. You know, let's talk about your perfect niche. In my doctoral studies, uh, I did a, I did some research, I did a study based on trying to solve a very specific problem. I found that faith-based businesses uh, were relying on traditional uh, methodology to hire employees. In other words, they would look at their resumes, they would look at their uh, past employment, they would look at their experience and they would say, yep, this is the right person, let's plug them into the role, and then find later on that they were totally not the right person for that role. But uh, here's the thing, it's not uncommon, businesses do it all the time, right? Here's the mistake. They're not putting people into a role based on where that person is gifted. And a person may not be working in a field they are gifted at, okay? Why? Here's a great reason, a uh, great example. I went into software engineering, all right? I was good at it, I, I enjoyed it, but I found that software engineering and, and writing code wasn't something I just was passionate about. I mean, I can do it, I was good at it, but I just didn't love it. And what I found was I loved helping other engineers grow and develop in their careers more than actually writing the code myself. Turns out I ended up in technology leadership. Finding where you're gifted is, is a little more challenging. So here's how you do it. You ready for this? At the end of the day, I want you to ask yourself a pretty basic question. Where today did I feel the most joy? Then ask yourself, where was I just at peace? Where was I just happy? What was I doing during that time? And keep a record of that for a few days. And then you'll start to narrow down where you find your joy and your peace and your purpose. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When you find these things and certain activities align with them, you're starting to find the things you're gifted at. What I found in my study and was able to prove empirically was that the, when the fruits of, of joy and peace and purpose show up in your life and your felt, you're usually doing something that you are passionate about, that you are gifted at, and that you're good at. Now you've found something, okay? You take that information, plug that in, and bounce it off of the niche you're looking to go into, the topic you're looking to study and, and, and explore and, and know and be an expert in, now you're gaining ground on narrowing down your perfect niche. So let's, let's look at this for just a second. Let's recap a little bit. You've decided you want to solve whatever problem in your life and do it through digital affiliate marketing. You maybe tried it and you've struggled. It may be because you didn't pick the right niche. Or maybe you're just getting started and you're like, man, I don't wanna make a mistake, so, so how do I make sure I pick the right niche? Whatever brought you to this training, it's okay. Because what I've just talked about is gonna help you save time, money, and a whole lot of headache. I designed this training for the purpose of helping you overcome that initial obstacle of picking the right niche. 
Maybe you've already picked one and it was the wrong one. Hey, that's okay. Start fresh, start over, move on. Okay, improvise, overcome, adapt. But maybe you're just getting started and you haven't even picked one yet. Good for you. Okay, a little less pain in your journey <laughs> right now. Some of us, we had to suffer the pain. So I'm hoping that this video will be something that can help you establish your digital affiliate marketing business, overcome the difficulties of picking the right niche, and make sure that it's one that aligns with something that you feel joy, peace, and purpose in. And when you can do that, I promise you, you'll be using your gifts. You can learn more about this concept in my ebook. Make sure you read that. If you're at this point in the video, you've probably already received it in your email. It's called The Five Secrets to uh, uh, Understanding Your Perfect Gifts and exploring what those true gifts are and your passions and how they align. So uh, it's a short read. I hope you enjoy it. It was complimentary and, I, and you should have it in your email now. Uh, also, I want you to make sure that you go through and, and, and align yourself with that, a niche, whatever one you pick, okay? And make sure that you are providing a service to your perfect customer that is something that solves a problem for them. Then you can talk about it all day long because you love it and you're passionate about it. And that's easy. That makes making digital marketing a lot easier because now you can create content that's something that you're an authority on, you know about, and you're solving a problem for your customer. Then as you dive even further into that, you can start offering those services and uh, in whatever way. Maybe it's a product or a service you have or created or someone that you're an affiliate for and you're marketing for somebody else. But regardless, you're providing the right solution to the right person in the field that you're passionate about. That is going to narrow down your perfect niche. I hope that this video helps you. I really do. And uh, I wanted to keep it kind of brief because I know you're busy and you're just getting a lot going in your business and that's <laughs> it's exhausting sometimes. But I just want to encourage you. Keep going. Don't stop. Okay? Nobody that ever stopped was a success. you got to keep pushing. All right? Keep on pushing. In fact, one of my favorite theologians of all time was a, a little fish named Dory. She said, just keep swimming. Hey, I'm Dr. Jason Owen, founder of Imperial Digital Learning, and I hope that this video helps you on your journey. Have a great day.